Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. So in the spirit of Unity 6.2 just releasing and become a fully supported version, Unity have added their new mesh LOD system, which automatically creates and manages a level of details on meshes when you import. And this is all about an easy way to reduce polygon count and all about improving performance with the most minimal memory footprint that you can possibly have. Unlike traditional LOD groups, it doesn't create extra game objects or duplicates meshes and all LODs are stored in the mesh's original index buffer so it allows you to reuse the same vertex buffer to increase performance. In this video I'm going to talk about how it works, how you generate your LODs, how you adjust the selection at runtime, how you can make the fading better, talk about the limitations of the troubleshooting. I'm going to show you a free extension which shows you how you can export all of these LOD meshes if you want to use them in your own 3D software. I'll put all the notations in the timeline so you can skip through it. Just before we start, I will say that you can check out Unity's official documentation, which has a rundown with everything when you need to click on the pages. It'll give you detailed information. I've actually created a simple web page with all the information that is far more concise on how it works, how to generate, how to change at runtime, cross-fading, limitations, and then possible troubleshooting. So first of all, I've got the Suburban Neighborhood Pack here, and I just wanted to show it on this vehicle this car it is more of a high polygon mesh and you'll be able to see that this car is around 13,000 triangles or there thereabouts now when you bring any mesh into unity you can click on it in the project panel and you will get all the import settings as you would expect regular in halfway down is something called mesh lod and you could just simply tick the box which is generate mesh lod's Tick that. If you need to limit the LODs or discard the odd levels, you can tick those boxes, but that's not something you need to worry about. Then go down and hit apply. Once that runs through, you can go to the mesh filter, which is just below, which will show you the LOD levels. And you can see the, on this top panel, if we scroll across here, you can see the levels of the LOD that gets reduced on this car as we adjust it. And you can see the first one at 13,000, second one at 4,000, then 2000 and each time it tries to half it. And just to be aware, if you ever want to remove the LOD groups, you can go back to the original imported mesh, untick the generate mesh LODs, hit apply again, and they will be removed. So the whole concept of how it works is it tries to collapse the edges while preserving the shape. An asset needs to be at least 256 triangles for this simplification to work. And if too few remain like 64, then it will limit the amount and no more triangles will be removed. And each LOD does roughly reduce the quality by half. And Unity do say that the best results is you get from organic or high density meshes like rocks, creatures and sculptures, things that would be truly high poly. You'll see that if I go to wireframe mode and just start moving away from this car, you can see that it starts removing the triangles as I get closer and further away. So if you want to update the runtime of the LODs to make these more apparent, wait a little bit more time before the LODs start to automatically pop in. If you go to edit and you go to project settings, I've just got a little pop out here. We can go to quality and you'll notice there's a new section here called level of detail. And there's the level of detail group bias minimum group level, and the mesh LOD threshold. This is the project wide setting. So as I do move this scale up, you'll notice that it starts kicking in earlier. The closer we are, so obviously it does ruin our mesh if we're not careful. So leaving this on a higher amount across project wide will actually make this happen sooner when you're in your game. But this defends what's visually acceptable for your game that you're trying to create. So it's a very much an automatic thing. Now, sometimes a project wide setting will not be suitable for your project, but what you can do is if you select the car or whatever you're using in the hierarchy, you can go to the mesh renderer and see the mesh LOD, specifically adjust the selection bias to make sure that your asset doesn't quite bring those LODs in quite as early. It will take longer per asset or even have a case where you want this to happen even earlier compared to the rest of the assets in the project. You can even choose to override the current LOD so that you can select the LOD level that you might want for an asset if something didn't crush it so massively. And even on this trash can, if we modify the meshes bias here, you can see that it pops in earlier and you can see how the polygons will adjust based on this automatically. Now, if I try and use this on one of these tree meshes, when I zoom out, 
you can see how it reduces this as if you would expect it to cull out some of the features which are not applicable. Now, if you want to make the transition smoother, you need to actually enable GPU resident draw because this is something that Unity are going to support going forward. So it's the best way to make crossfade to be enabled for this feature. So the best way to do this again is go edit project settings. And if you go to graphics, you'll find your RP asset. And when you click on your asset, you will see that GPU resident draw is currently disabled. And if you enable instance drawing in this case, and then it does talk about the batch renderer group that needs to be keep all. And you can then navigate that back in graphics in project settings and just make sure that batch renderer group variants are in fact keep all. And you also want to make sure that LOD crossfade is actually ticked as well. And then in this instance, you will get a smoother fade between the transitions on the actual meshes that pop in and out. And just to be aware that there is some limitations of this feature. So the following systems don't work. So the entities graphics, particle system, visual effects graph, static batching, and GPU instancing. Now, if you do have the static batching enabled within project settings, it's on a per object basis. So you want to be careful with the static batching. You can still have it enabled project wide, but you need to be able to specify per asset if you want to use static batching for the asset. There is currently no visualization to be able to see any active LODs at runtime. And I do hope Unity adds something soon, which you'll be able to visualize when the current or what the current LOD will be. So you can actually see it because this thing is supposed to be used in the background rather than something that you see happen all of the time. And specifically when you see artifacting on the screen, like here, you can see that the normals get affected on this asset. You can actually lower the threshold or the bias between each individual asset or project wide to try and mitigate that, or you can try and limit the number of LODs in the mesh. Or in the, any other case, you can use LOD groups with this, and I'll give you an example of how to make this happen. Let's say we've got our car here and you want to be able to use an LOD group. I usually like to create an empty game object. I'll just call this my car LOD group, and I'm just going to add the LOD group to the parent game object. You can see here that when we have a specific subsection of LODs that we can use, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my child of the LOD below. And here I've got four duplications of the same mesh. And you can see why this would be a bigger overhead than Unity's newer LOD system, because this is a duplication of the mesh. But in this instance, we can use them both together. You can see the LOD zero, and you can see that if we override the threshold, we've got which would be the most detailed version of our mesh. If I go to one, what I might do is enable it and set the current override level to level one, set two, override, set that to two, as you can see how it changes, four, set that to maybe three. Now, if we click back on the LOD group and I select zero, so I must the highest mesh, then I select one and just drag it into the renderer slots like so. And then I'll probably add another one my LOD three and add the last detail there. Now, if I just bring these LOD groups much closer together, so you can see the shift between them. So you can see how these would adjust when I move across the LOD groups and it eventually gets called away because that's the last step. And of course this gives you a more direct control over when the LOD groups should change. But remember, this will have a bigger memory overhead when it comes to using the system. So do keep that in mind if you're going to use it. I'm going to show you an asset which allows you to export all of these LOD meshes directly to FBX. You'll find mesh LOD to FBX, which you can find on GitHub. So what you can do to install this is that you can grab the URL here in the documentation, go back to the package manager in Unity, which is window package management and package manager. And if you press the little plus in the corner, you can go to install package from Git URL. We'll paste that link that we just copied and click install. Then you'll have a brand new menu, which is called tools mesh LOD exporter. Then when this pops out, it's looking for a source mesh. We'll click search and I'll add in car. It's this one that I want. So we can either skip odd LODs or recalculate the normals if we need to, but we can add the maximum number of LODs that we want to export. So you can see as we up this, it will show the LODs that is going to export with a little preview of each one. Let's say we want four, so we can modify this. So it goes down to 6,000 triangles in this case, and we can choose the save path. 
So I'll save it in a new folder that I've created and then just export to FBX. You can see it's successfully exported. I've just dragged this straight into 3ds Max. You can see that I have the LOD 0, 1, 2 and 3. And you can also check out the video that I've made on amplifying posters. And imposters are all about taking really high polygon meshes and taking those down into a few triangles by making a light accurate representation of that based on textures. So you can check that out if you find that interesting too. So I do hope you find this useful. Do be sure to throw a like and subscribe because it always helps me out. And make sure you check out my Patreon too for over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Big thank you to all my patrons. A massive thank you to Verishutha and Party of 10 for their amazing support. So thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.